One of the people on the Vue.js subreddit pointed out that I was doing props incorrectly. I was defining them incorrectly. And they're correct. So in the Vue.js style guide, one of the essential rules is to not define props in just an array, but to provide more detail. There are two forms that we're going to learn today. So the first is the basic, where it just has the key, the prop that we're getting in. That's what would have been in a string before as part of the array. And then we have the type of that prop. That'll make it so that if we pass in something different than what we're expecting, in this case, if we pass in an object or an array or a Boolean or a number, then we'll get a helpful warning. And these are the different types we can use. Notice it has the basic stuff like string, number, boolean, array, and object, but it also has date and function and symbol. So let's do our first definition. So we will remove this array, and now we will define it as a hash, and here we'll have it as a date. So if we pass in anything that's not a date, then we'll get an error. Let's see that in action. So here we have our date being displayed correctly, and there's no error. Let's see what happens when we pass in something that is not a date. For example, let's see what happens if we accidentally delete that colon. So instead of having the published at variable, it'll be the string published at. All right, so we reload and, well, we get this unhelpful error because we're in Nuxt with SSR. But if we were in regular view, we'd get a slightly more helpful error. And we can get that error back by going to our command line. So it says that the type check failed for the prop date, expected date, got string with value published at. And so that is quite a bit more helpful than saying that is not a function. When we see that error, we can go search for published at and easily spot the issue. But what happens if we pass in nothing? So will it explode because it's not a date? Because, you know, sometimes we do have dates that are not entered yet. So let's reload. And the type check does fail because we got a string with value of nothing. But if we put actually nothing in, then it'll be fine. Or if we have our published at, but it returns null, then it'll also be fine. Of course, we do sometimes want to say that you have to put in a property. Not in the date display necessarily, but in some of our other props. So for example, in video byline, we want to require that a video is passed in. And we can do that using the required option. So this will require the next form of props. And so we have our hash on the outside, and then the uh, value for the video key won't be just the type, it will be an array. And the type, in this case, it's an object. And then we can put in required true. In addition to type and required, there are two other options you can use. So you can put in a default for that property, and it can be either a value or a function. And you can put in a validator function. With the validator function, it has to return true. Otherwise, it will throw one of those warnings. And so that is what you need to know about props.
for the rest of this video, I'm going to be going through all the props that I have here and putting them into the new style. You can stay on and keep watching if you're interested, or you can go ahead and move on to the next video. Either way, enjoy. That's all of the props, so now we're going to go through the app and find any errors that might be thrown and see if we can fix them. All right, we've checked just about everything. And now with register, that is the last page. And it finds another one, invalid prop. So it's for has name. All right, so we just put this colon there and that should fix our last error. And that's it for today. Thank you so much for watching, and be sure to tune in next time, sometime later this weekend, when we're going to be looking at Mirage.js and creating a mock server with it. This is especially useful if you were trying to follow along with our app, but you didn't want to create a complete backend or install the uh, Ruby one that I've included. So if that's you, or if you're interested in learning a cool new library, then join me next time. I will see you then.